is now. Join us as we lead the way to a better world. Very good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us physically this time at our second quarter results press conference. My name is Rishi, and on behalf of Infosys, I'd like to welcome all of you, our friends from media, our leaders from Infosys. We are delighted to host you today. Uh, a couple of house rules before we start. Uh, we have a lot of friends from media present today, so I will request one question from each media house, like I always do. And so that we can accommodate everyone over the next one hour. With that, let me invite our Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Salil Parikh, for his opening remark. Over to you, Salil. Thanks. Thanks, Rishi. Uh, good afternoon and welcome. Uh, it's always good to have all of you here on the campus. Uh, and I'm sure you're also enjoying being back uh, in person and being at our campus. So thank you for being here. Uh, our Q2 performance was strong with year-on-year -year growth at 18.8% and sequential at 4% in constant currency. Growth in Q2 was broad-based with all industries and geographies growing in double digits in constant currency. This momentum is accompanied by a strong pipeline of large deals and the highest large deal value in the last seven quarters at $2.7 billion. 54% of this is net new. These elements are a clear reflection of the deeply differentiated digital and cloud capabilities we have developed that are highly relevant for a client's strategic priorities. Our digital revenues are now 61.8% of our overall revenue and they grew at 31.2% in the quarter in constant currency terms. While digital continues to see strong growth rates, we are seeing this quarter acceleration in the growth trajectory of our core services. This is due to our industry-leading automation capabilities and reflects an interest among client, clients towards cost optimization programs. We also see this in a large deal pipeline with strong focus on cost reduction programs in addition to the digital transformation programs in the pipeline. While we generally do not share the specific amount of our cloud revenue, we are delighted to share that in Q2, our cloud revenue was larger than $1 billion, showing tremendous strength of our cloud services, especially our industry-leading cobalt capability. A strong growth was accompanied by operating margin expansion of 150 basis points, where we had an operating margin in the quarter of 21.5%. This stemmed from cost efficiencies, optimization in large deals and currency benefits. Our attrition has been decreasing now for three quarters on a quarterly annualized basis, including now in Q2, and we see this trend along a downward trajectory. In keeping with a capital allocation policy, the board has announced a share buyback of rupees 9,300 crores and an interim dividend of approximately rupees 6,940 crores. With that, let me open it up for questions. Uh, Rishi, over to you. Thank you, Salil. Joining Salil is Mr. Nilanjan Roy, Chief Financial Officer, Infosys. With that, we'll open up for questions. The first question is from Ritu Singh from CNBC TV 18. Uh, hi, Salil here. Um, a quick question on your guidance that you've given uh, from 15 to 16% for revenue. You've tightened it further uh, to about 14 to 16%. The upper end remains the same, but if you could give us a sense on what made you tighten 
uh, the guidance and also in your share buyback. You had the option to go all the way up to 18,000 as we understand. Why capped at uh, uh, about 9,000 uh, odd that you've done? Thank you. So on, um, on the guidance, uh, we, we've had an incredible uh, large deals uh, performance in this quarter, 2.7 billion. We've had strong momentum, 18.8% growth in the quarter. Uh, we continue to see good traction. We also see that there is some caution. Last time we had mentioned uh, that we, we saw some caution in uh, mortgages, in financial services. We talked about retail. Uh, we now see uh, some caution in high tech uh, and in telecom. Uh, keeping all of those factors, the, the positive factors and the global macro factors, we've decided to make our guidance narrower at the higher end uh, of the band that we had. Uh, so it was 14 to 16, and now, now it's 15 to 16. Uh, on the share buyback, uh, let me request Nilanjan to address that. Yeah, so on the share buyback, of course, the board considers a lot of factors, but coming to a specific point on the maximum, since it's an open market offer, it's limited to 15% of the share capital and reserves, which is about 9,400 odd crores, give or take. So we, we've, uh, the board has decided a figure of 9,300. Thank you. The next question is from Anisha Jain from ET Now, um, and Anisha sent her question on text. What has supported the margin performance? What are the levers to improve margins here on? Deal win is strong at 2.7 billion. Going forward, do you expect clients to cut spends of this run rate of over 2 billion? Will that continue? Will FY24 also see double digit growth? So let me start with a couple of them. The margin Nilanjan will come back on. On the deal wins, uh, I think this is an incredible performance uh, from, from the company. 2.7 billion is a very large number. Uh, we, we have a very uh, a strong focus on large deals uh, and 54% uh, being net new. That gives us a really good platform for what we see uh, in the future. Now, large deals, we've always uh, maintained. Uh, these are volatile. Some quarters, the numbers are high, some are low. These are not. Uh, a very predictable outcome. But in general, if you look over a four quarter period, we have a fairly good large deal momentum. Our pipeline for large deals remains quite strong today and it's in a good position. So we feel comfortable with where we are in the market. Uh, just to add uh, the macro comments that I made uh, in the earlier question, th those obviously still hold. Uh, yeah, so on the margin, uh, we've improved from 20.0 to 21.5 sequentially, which is 150 basis points improvement. Uh, we got 70 basis points out of that because of the currency uh, benefits. Uh, all currencies versus the dollar, as you know, depreciated as well. And of course, there was a cost cross currency impact. So that gave us 70 bips. Uh, we got 90 basis points from cost optimizations. And of course, you're aware of the levers we deploy in terms of the pyramid, in terms of automation, uh, in terms of on-site offshore pricing. So between that, uh, large deal optimizations uh, and uh, you know other costs which we have been able to take out our partly offset by utilization, we got about 90 bips from there. We got about 40 bips from reducing our subcons. Again, a cost lever which we've been trying to attack, that gave us 40 bips. And this was offset by about 40 bips from comp related because uh, some of our comp hikes were rolled out in 1st July, as we mentioned. So all in all, we got 150 basis points improvement. Uh, if you see from the guidance perspective, and as we had mentioned in the last uh, earnings call, we had said we will be at the bottom end of our 21-23. Uh, guidance. We have now looking at our first half performance. We have for this year at least tightened it uh, to 21 to 22 percent uh, and we expect to be at the bottom end of that band. Thank you. The next question also on text is from BQ Prime. Sajith Mangat asks, for Salil, can you elaborate on the demand environment in the US and Europe in context of the geopolitical events in Europe and macroeconomic challenges seen in the US? What is the exposure to Europe, especially Germany? And how do you see the TCV pipeline? And for Nilanjan, similar question on margins again. How do you see the trajectory for margins given weak traditional H2? And what is the kind of leverage available with respect to bench utilization? So on the demand environment, uh, what we see is on the macro front, uh, what I shared earlier, which is uh, we had indicated last time we start to, started to see some concerns uh, in the mortgage side, in financial services, uh, in the retail industry. Uh, we are seeing uh, this time uh, some concerns on uh, high tech uh, and in telecom industry in addition to those. 
Uh, these are more on the discretionary part of our pipeline. Uh, we also at the same time seeing a strong large deals pipeline, uh, which gives us some confidence. Uh, we've pivoted and I think uh, the market itself is also pivoting with our clients uh, where there's more and more interest in automation and cost efficiency. And we see that uh, coming through uh, within our pipeline. Uh, we've seen growth both in digital uh, over 30% and in core, uh, which shows that both of our engines are, are working quite well. Uh, in terms of US and Europe, uh, today we uh, in Q2, we had a very strong growth uh, in Europe, uh, over 30%, strong growth in the US, uh, over 15%. Uh, we continue to see the pipeline uh, between both uh, of those uh, geographies today, but also keeping in mind that we are being watchful uh, given the macro environment developing. So on the margins, uh, as we look at second half, we've ended the first half at about 20.7%. And like we've guided at the bottom end of the 21 to 22%. So of course, margins for the second half will have to go up. And of course, we have our levers in terms of our utilization, which is one of the factors mentioned, because we are really at the bottom end you know, of our utilization. As we put a lot of pressures into the system now, they are sitting on the bench, but over a period of time, they will start getting deployed. So this will become a tailwind. As attrition starts coming down, of course, this will be a benefit in terms of stretch salaries. Uh, so that's one of the other things which started helping us. So I think we've, in this range of 21 to 22, we are quite comfortable uh, for the full year as well. Thank you. The next question is from Z Business from Kushal Gupta. Kushal, question for Salil. Uh, Europe's growth has been great with 28.5 constant currency growth. Is there actually no issue with client IT budgets for the next year amid the fears of recession? And for Nilanjan, operationally, the performance has been great. What were the key factors behind this and the outlook ahead? On Europe, I think uh, we, we've uh, had a very good traction in Europe for the last several quarters. And that is shown again uh, in this quarter's growth number. Uh, we continue to see the pipeline uh, uh, of large deals is strong. But we are also cautious and watching the macro development. But today, uh, our pipeline uh, looks good and our guidance for the full year, therefore, uh, is at 15 to 16 percent. Yeah, on the operational, of course, as we have mentioned, of course, we have a good margin story. But I think even beyond that, our ability to absorb freshers in, making sure that they are trained, they are uh, picking up new skills, putting them into projects, uh, you know, and then over a period of time, start rotating them. So because this talent pipeline for us, we knew in the long run was the only way this industry would grow, right, other than rotational churn. Uh, and therefore, in fact, uh, in the first half, we've already done, I think, close to 40,000 of the freshers across uh, the company uh, in all streams. So we are quite hopeful in terms of absorbing the freshers, putting them, you know, uh, through their paces and then start putting them into uh, large deals and other deals as well. So that's been a big learning for us during this entire process. Thank you. The next question is from Chandra from Money Control. <laughs> Um, I just want to ask you about, you know, the net employee addition number. I mean, it's usually a good lead indicator of growth. And that has come in at 10,000, uh, I think, which is uh, what compared to 21,000 in the previous quarter. So uh, what does it say about, you know, the growth going ahead? I mean, because on the one hand, you sound confident. But is this also a sign of uh, caution? What are you hearing from clients in conversations? Because other companies are saying, at least in Europe, the discussion is only about how they're going to manage the winter. So if you can give us a sense of, you know, what you're hearing from North America as well as uh, Europe. Um, Nilanjan, a question on the margin guidance. You know, you've uh, kind of tightened it to the upper end at a time when supply side challenges are coming down. Again, how should we read this? Uh, are there growth constraints, pricing constraints? Um, and if you can also tell us about why you're opting for a market buyback for the second time, because even the last time, um, you know, many shareholders felt it was a negative move because it really doesn't benefit them. So why are you opting for a market buyback? And one question for the HR head on moonlighting. Um, Infosys, you know, sent out a missive to its employees on how they should not do time. But if you can give us your views on moonlighting. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Chandra. Um, on the first question, I think 10,000 is a very strong uh, net addition for us uh, on uh, top of the 20,000 uh, that we had in the last quarter. Uh, having said that, uh, what we see with clients, 
in the industries that I was referring to before, uh, for example, mortgages and financial services or retail or parts of high tech or telecom, uh, we see more caution in the way that the buyers, the clients are looking at uh, services. Uh, we also see uh, some impact on discretionary spend there. At the same time, our pipeline is extremely large. We had a very strong large deals number uh, for this, uh, this quarter. Uh, the, the way we are looking at it is we are making sure that we support our clients as they're looking for their growth transformation programs. Uh, and now more and more uh, for their cost efficiency, where we, we're deploying our automation services, those programs. And our pipeline uh, has uh, shown that there are more and more of those types of activities uh, as well. Uh, our view is we are ready uh, in this macro environment for all types of client work, whether it focuses on digital and growth, whether it focuses on cost. Uh, and yet we want to be careful that we are cognizant of what's going on with the macro environment uh, and make sure that we go into this watchfully. So that's how we are seeing this uh, progression happen at this stage. What? Right. Sorry? I'll repeat the full answer. Uh, <laughs> we... <laughs> Come on, I'll repeat the whole thing. You, you take whatever meaning that has. <laughs> So on the buyback, I think uh, firstly, we have a very predictable capital allocation policy, which we believe is really best in class. It is a five-year policy from FY20 to FY24. We said we will return back 85% of our free cash flows. So it's a very you know, predictable policy. It's got a dividend element on it, and it's got a buyback and a, uh, an option also to do special dividends. And therefore, we also look at over this period, how will our cash flows change? And therefore, how do we give back money in terms of both dividends? and buybacks or to a special dividend. And therefore, we also want to see how much cash we on the balance sheet. So it's not about, you know, you know, finishing our cash, you know, day one. So we pace all this out. And of course, one of the ways you can do it is to a uh, tender offer or through an open market offer. And we've seen our past. In fact, our last two were open market, not the last one. Last two, we've done open market offers. And the board feels looking at uh, listings in the US, our uh, regulatory concerns, EPS secretion, that they, it could be better to go for an open market offer. So they look at other considerations as well. And we decide to go for an open market. On the margin guidance, of course, I just mentioned, yes, see, we are at 20.7, right, at uh, H1. Uh, and we, like we said, we are going to be at 21 to 22 at the bottom end of 21. So, you know, mathematically, we will have to be probably closer to 21.4 or something to even hit 21. So we're looking at margin levers going ahead. Of course, as we've talked about, there will be some abatement uh, from the attrition side. Of course, they will be on the same side headwinds because of furlough, because it is a seasonally weak spot, as you mentioned. So we will have some headwinds coming from furloughs, lower working days, and which of some of these we will uh, try to uh, offset through our cost optimizations, etc. And therefore, like we said, the 21 to 24 is a narrow band, which we'll be comfortable with for this year. Uh, on that, uh, le let me address it. Uh, 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 the, the way, um, one of the things that our companies always focused on is making sure that we have uh, real attention to learning opportunities and generally opportunities for all of our employees. And we've always encouraged our employees to have that sort of a mindset uh, within the company. In fact, within the company, we've set up over the last several years, so not now, not last week, over the last several years, a platform which we call Accelerate, to which uh, employees can look at what we call internally gig, gig work, different projects uh, outside of their main, main work. Uh, on an average quarter, over 4,000 people uh, apply for this. Uh, about 600 are selected. So it's something that is active within the company. Now for gig opportunities in the external environment, we support the aspirations of our employees to learn beyond their work. We will support them to work on certain gig projects after the prior approval of the managers, we are also developing more comprehensive policies for that while ensuring contractual and confidentiality commitments are fully respected. However, to be clear, we do not support dual employment. 
Thank you, Chandra. Chandra, we have a. We'll come back to you, Chandra. We'll come back to you, Chandra, please. I don't. I don't have the information on the processes. Uh, if we have found in the past, uh, if the employees who are doing uh, blatant work in two specific companies where there's confidentiality issues, uh, we have uh, let go of them. Uh, in the in this in the last twelve months, but I don't have the data. Uh, I don't have the data, but uh, we can certainly get it to you. Thanks, Chandra. Next question is from Shilpa Fadnis from the Times of India. Oh, sir. Uh, Infosys believes in converting an adversity into an opportunity. What are the three, two or three things that you would do differently in a probability of uncertain events, especially when the client's decision-making velocity has slowed down? My second question is on barring BPM, very few subsidiaries are firing up. You and Mr. Roy did an internal review two months back on different subsidiaries. Um, so, are you taking a hard look at some of them and are you folding some of them? Uh, sorry, Shilpa, can you just repeat the first one, please? Uh, Infosys believes in converting an adversity into an opportunity. What are the two or three diff uh, things that you do differently uh, when uncertain events are panning out, especially in terms of macroeconomic indicators and the uh, client decision-making velocity slowing down? And my third question is, Infosys long back, uh, you know, started collapsing layers internally. Recently, we've seen some of the seniors are put on sabbatical. Some of them are let go of due to account-related challenges. How do you plan to uh, motivate this pack, especially when, um, you know, we hear that uh, variable payouts, uh, jail seven and above, have still not been rolled out? Uh, okay, I'll, I'll start with the first one. I think uh, it was a question about how do we convert uh, in this environment a different situation to what, what Infosys can do best. Uh, I think that's a very critical uh, uh, sort of point. Uh, what we are seeing in this environment is uh, the capabilities that Infosys has. You know, we have a very strong set of capabilities on digital and cloud, and we're seeing good traction and growth on those. We also have uh, very good capabilities on automation. Uh, leveraging artificial intelligence and machine learning in efficiency. And we are seeing a very good traction on the cost programs where clients are looking at efficiency. So what, what our approach is, we want to make sure that both of those uh, pillars and both of those engines are available to clients. And depending on what uh, uh, situation they are in, uh, and as the macro develop, because the macro will, will change uh, they could be positive uh, uh, stimulants, they could be negative stimulants. So that are things we don't know. Uh, but we have both of these uh, engines which are working well. And we believe that that will support us uh, as we look at it in a, a careful way as we go through the next uh, period of time. Now the second one was about subsidiaries. Uh, do you want to take that one? Yeah, I, I mean, we review subsidiaries every quarter. It's not as if it's an annual exercise. In fact, uh, three of our best subsidiaries, Ben is here, Andrew is here, Radha is here. So, uh, I mean, that's a, I mean, we continue to push them for performance. There's no question about it, the way we get pushed. So, that's part of the game. But I think we are all are doing them very well. They've a lot of synergy benefits. Uh, you know, Ben across the entire DX world, Wong Doody is now across Europe, in, in India, it's now in the US and across the DS. And it's a very large platform for us to take to our clients on the experience. So, I think we have no concerns really. And on the layer, the, I'm not aware of people on sabbaticals. We, we have, I think, uh, people who are, we, we have internal tracking, for example, you know, connecting with our employees and we track what we call our engagement scores. And we've seen a uh, uh, steady uh, and good increase with our engagement scores across uh, our company. We are seeing a real connect where uh, people are seeing, you know, there's a new set of uh, policies and initiatives uh, that our HR team have rolled out for leadership development, for skilling, uh, for making sure that there is much more awareness and support uh, in the time during COVID, both from a medical perspective, but also from a, a mental health perspective. So we are seeing a lot of traction. I don't see 
uh, any of those levers being uh, uh, something which is a concern. There's always something that's being watched at. And in fact, we are now seeing last three quarters attrition coming down quite significantly each quarter. Uh, this In Q2, it was down by uh, over another two points in the previous quarter. So we think some of the uh, initiatives that were put in place are starting to have an impact and we will continue to drive those initiatives ahead. Thank you. The next question is from Sai Ishwar from the Economic Times. Oh, hello, sir. Uh, sir, you had said uh, that um, uh, you're seeing caution in, in mortgages, uh, financial services, retail, and that's catching on to high tech and uh, telecom as well, right? So, uh, can you actually tell us like uh, whether these are uh, discretionary spends that are getting affected or do you see the total tech spends itself uh, being held back by clients? And also and one more question to uh, uh, Nilanjan sir is, uh, uh, we are also hearing news about the onboarding delay of uh, freshers, right? So, uh, but uh, on the other hand, you've already uh, reached uh, 40,000 target uh, in terms of fresher hiring. So how should we read into this? Because we are he uh, hearing reports seeing people who got offers in 2021 are not onboarded yet. So did Infosys um, probably overestimate demand? So on the uh, first one, uh, I think the uh, what we're seeing in those specific industries that I mentioned, whether it's mortgages or high tech or the others, uh, is uh, an impact on the discretionary spend right now. Uh, what we're also seeing is, just stepping back from all of that, that many uh, large companies are also looking at being more cost efficient. So we see that given that we have a strength in digital we have a strength in transformation we have a strength in discretionary and we have a strength in uh, uh, automation and cost efficiency that we are able to support clients on both of those engines but we do see uh, those areas where we see some caution uh, in uh, more of the discretionaries on the fresher side i think like i said we've already done forty thousand, and we started we told you at fifty thousand. so I don't think there's been any delay, uh, you know, particularly that, you know, uh, we are continue to put in Mysore. A lot of people are going to Mysore. In fact, in physical, it's a good thing. We've opened up the campus and it's a big attraction for our talent to uh, go through the physical training of Mysore and then go to the DCs. So we are, we are quite tracking as per plan. In fact, like you said, our 10,000 net ad probably is the highest in the industry. So even. I mean, it will go up. We, 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 have, we, we haven't, uh, you know, given out a number as yet, but of course, the 50 will go up. Thank you. The next question is from the Hindu business line, Haripriya Surepan. Hi, sir. So, uh, what percentage of your workforce is uh, back to the offices? Uh, what's your play there? Do you intend to call uh, your employees back to offices? Uh, and uh, second question on attrition, you are uh, sort of tried to uh, gotten it down. So, uh, how, what's helping you? How, how have you achieved it? And do you see more moderation going forward? Thank you. On the return to work, uh, I was looking, we, we, we're looking at this uh, uh, every week. Last week, uh, across India, we had about 45,000 employees uh, in the office uh, at any given time, not all the five days, but at different times. Uh, and that's a huge uh, number given where we were, where everyone was in this industry uh, a few months ago. Uh, what we are finding is, uh, the approach we've taken so far, which is essentially we've been extremely supportive of our employees, uh, we've been extremely uh, supportive of a flexible approach, uh, has been uh, well received and it's working. We're seeing that this is now gradually increasing. A uh, couple of weeks ago, I was in the uh, our Pune DC. Uh, in fact, Radha and I were both there. Uh, we could see a lot of engagement with employees as we connected with uh, uh, several of them. Uh, my sense is over time, we will uh, uh, make uh, you know, all the support necessary so employees can, more and more employees can come back. Uh, there are, of course, several client situations which require specific action. So those will be followed as the clients are requiring it. Uh, but where we are able to provide some flexibility, we will continue to provide flexibility. On the attrition, there were several initiatives that uh, Krish and our HR team rolled out uh, maybe now 12, 18 months ago. And I think we'd, we'd shared with uh, the, some of those 
Uh, there's one of them, for example, where uh, there's a, a very a well-defined path uh, in terms of career in the first several years of an employee, and the steps are uh, clearly defined and, and well understood. Uh, that's a big, big uh, uh, sort of uh, positive for employees. But there are no surprises then uh, any anymore for them. Uh, there's a lot of uh, emphasis on uh, leadership development and skilling. There are programs with uh, large uh, global universities, which the company runs, which give employees the ability uh, to self-improve. And then we have our online platform, uh, which allows employees to do it. So there are several of those initiatives. Uh, and as a combination of that, uh, it's worked. The trend, you know, last three quarters is, uh, is good. Uh, and my sense is these initiatives will continue to give us benefit. Thank you. The next question is from Reuters News, Setu Raman. Uh, good evening, sir. So just wanted to know, um, what is, was there any standout deal uh, closure uh, this quarter? Uh, I mean, like, uh, would you be able to help me with your benchmark for the large deal? I uh, just wanted to know, like, whether there were, like, multiple... Uh, like the sizes like chunk of deals or like and also want to know about the smaller with whether any smaller deals because you don't uh normally give out uh, details on the smaller ones uh also uh uh last minute uh buyback announcement and uh uh the open market buying was like it looks like a bit of a pressure from the market in terms of uh uh I mean, I just want to know, like, was there any pressure in terms of, because normally you uh, consider buyback, like, uh, when you come out with the earnings announcement. So this was the last moment. So there was, uh, in, was there any delay, like, any consideration about that? And um, so a uh, last one was like, uh, is there any reorganization going in the company with uh, Mr. Ravik Ma's exit? Like, is will the backfill happen for the president's role? Uh, are you looking at uh, anything? Thank you. I'll start with the first one. I think on large deals, uh, we had 27 large deals. So for us, large deals are deals which are more than 50 million in value. Uh, and so it's a very significant size of a deal. We don't uh, uh, give out any specific deal information to give you a sense. There are 27. That, that number can give you a sense uh, given... Um, the overall uh, uh, value of the large deals. Uh, on the buybacks, let me start, and Nilanjan might want to add, uh, we, we had a, a, a very well-defined capital allocation policy. Uh, we followed uh, uh, all of the reviews internally and externally uh, on that. Uh, um, we, we feel no unusual activity, whatever uh, sort of phrase uh, you use. Uh, it was uh, a well-informed uh, decision by the board uh, and uh, we, we think it's going to be a huge, huge positive because we have a, a capital return approach uh, through this policy. And, uh, and Nilanjan can add a little bit on that in a second. Uh, on uh, Ravi, uh, first, Ravi uh, is a good friend. Uh, I wish him all the best uh, in, in his new uh, endeavors. Uh, Infosys has um, incredible uh, leadership uh, talent in my mind. Uh, so over time, uh, we, we will uh, uh, make sure uh, that all of the uh, activities uh, are uh, in, the, in the best interest of the clients, uh, the employees, and the company. Anything on capital? No, I think, uh, like I said earlier, our capital allocation is very predictable. We said 85%. In fact, last year, we had given 73%. So I think if you have to catch up to 85, buyback was the most natural way to do it. So I don't think there's any pressure or anything. It, and that's the beauty of our policy. It's so predictable. Thank you. The next question is from Binu Paul from Business Today. Yeah, um, on, the, on the hiring of the freshers, so there's a large number of people that you've hired, you've planned, and I, I just wanted to ask what's the kind of impact when these freshers, you know, get on to newer projects you'll have on your uh, cost of optimization and uh, margins? On the so hiring uh, of college graduates, I think Last year, we had done something in the range of uh, 80,000 uh, college graduates who joined us. Uh, one of the things that we, we are uh, extremely good at and known for is our training program. 
and especially uh, now that everyone is back in person a uh, uh, mysore uh, training capability in addition to what we have now which is online we've also set up training uh, for some of the modules within our different uh, dcs or delivery centers uh, so we find that these individuals coming out of that uh, uh, infosys training are extremely ready to start to be uh, productive and they help us tremendously uh, last year uh, we had uh, 20% growth uh, q1 was 22% this quarter 18% so that needs a, 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 a tremendous input uh, that we see uh, of new uh, employees joining us thank you the next few questions are on text we have a question from shivani shinde from the business standard attrition is still in the 20% range by when do you see this coming down to sub 20% on attrition um, my sense is it's come down three quarters uh, in a row for us uh, each quarter a sizable large step uh, all of the initiatives that have been put in place by the company by the hr leadership uh, are starting to yield some benefits uh, over time my sense is we will continue to see more benefits uh, with attrition thank you the next question is from the new indian express any plans to make work from office mandatory as your peers are calling employees back to office or any plans to continue the present work from home model also are there any plans to increase local hiring in in the american and european market so on that i think what we've seen is uh, over the last several uh, quarters all of all through covid our work for home work from home approach has been extremely effective uh, for our clients uh, and and for our uh, employees we have now seen already a lot of our employees coming back uh, we've put in place in the past a uh, very flexible approach uh, where employees uh, really had a tremendous amount of choice uh, and we see this traction week on week uh, on its own uh, uh, increasing of employees coming back uh, we want to make sure that we build things in the future which keep you know this element of flexibility and make sure that uh, if there are some client specific needs we address them but we want to make sure that it's something that our employees are comfortable with thank you the next question is from the financial express what is the revenue model for infosys from 5g are you in talks with clients to leverage the opportunity there's also another question on moonlighting which we've already answered on 5g uh, it's uh, really a step change in the world uh, as it is uh, in india uh, infosys we've developed huge sets of capabilities for 5g client solutions first for the telco uh, industry and also uh, for use cases which are for other industries which are leveraging 5g for example retail or financial services uh, logistics warehousing there's a, a host of these that we develop we see a huge amount of traction uh, in this business uh, as we look forward uh, and so it's is one of the growth drivers uh, that we will see, continue to see uh, in the future thank you the next question is from cnbc hours are you sensing any hesitation from clients on expanding budgets what is the sentiment of clients in europe you mentioned some pressure in bfsi is it likely to worsen on the uh, client uh, uh, environment we 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 see the the macro uh, all of us the the information that we read but it sort of comes down to us in in different formats one uh, we have really two big drivers or engines on digital which is growing in q2 for us and core services which is also growing uh, both supported by very strong capabilities whether it's cobalt or automation we also see that there are in the macro environment specific uh, areas where we are more cautious uh, mortgages in financial services or retail or a high tech uh, some parts of high tech or telecom but at the same time our large deals pipeline uh, is doing quite well and we see a good traction in this quarter and large deals 
uh, which was at 2.7 billion. Uh, so all of those uh, are sort of different uh, aspects of what we see in the environment. Thank you. The next question is from Deccan Herald. How is the overall pricing environment? Are you looking at passing some of the costs to clients where cross-currency movement has an adverse impact? Will the current pricing pass sustain in the second half of FY23? Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, inflation across the world really is quite, uh, you know, pandemic in a sense of way we're seeing it across geographies. It's both across consumer prices, wage inflation. And of course, we are going back to many of our clients. One is as part of the uh, clauses which we have, like COLA. Sometimes we're going back as part of our digital pricing and trying to demonstrate the value we'll be able to bring, for instance, in the cost takeout program and a part of that, how that can be uh, you know, uh, taken back in terms of pricing or productivity with us. So these are multiple conversations uh, across each client because each clients are unique. The FP contracts, DNM contracts, mid-cycle contracts, new contracts. Uh, but the good news is that we have seen firstly a reduction in discounts that's very visible that the kind of earlier discounts we would have on renewals etc have definitely come down and the other hand we are trying to position ourselves on more increasing our prices on digital rate cards at the same time demonstrating the value this talent can give so uh, the answer is yes but this is a very long haul it will take time it's not something which we can you know chief, uh, flip the book uh, you know every quarter but this is something which we are seeing some traction thank you the next question is from the informist. How do you see the Q3 performance giving the macroeconomy situation? You've answered this in case you want to add any more. Uh, ju just a bit, I think on Q3, I go back to we don't give a quarterly guidance. We give uh, annual uh, guidance and there uh, we've taken uh, our growth guidance, which has gone from 14 to 16 to 15 to 16, which is at the uh, uh, higher end of the growth guidance. Expect, sorry. Top it where? Uh, we expect it to be in the 15 to 16, yeah. Thanks, Chandra. The last question for this evening is from the Mint. On the India market, given that there has been steady growth of enterprise spends for digital transformation in India, how does Infosys expect the domestic market to contribute to coming quarters? So on that, you know, we, we have uh, extremely bullish uh, on where the Indian uh, digital transformation agenda is. Uh, we've uh, done uh, uh, projects which are really mission critical. Uh, we can see, for example, uh, on the GST program, uh, uh, there's a tremendous realization and increase uh, in collection that uh, the government is seeing through digital uh, uh, implementation of a completely new platform. Uh, we've seen this year uh, similar things uh, with the uh, IT platform. So we are well positioned uh, to do scale digital transformation programs. And we look forward to working uh, with uh, uh, government organizations. Uh, private uh, companies uh, uh, in, in that area uh, as appropriate. Thank you. With that, we come to an end of this Q&A session. We thank our friends from media for being part of this press conference. Thank you, our leaders from Infosys for being part of this press conference. Thank you, Salil. Thank you, Nilanjan. Thanks. Before we conclude, please note that the archived webcast of this press conference will be available on the Infosys website and on our YouTube channel later today. Thank you and please join us for some high tea outside.